If you want to be notified when Breakfast Club videos go up, remember to subscribe and click the bell. Hey guys, Nathan Brandon Masters Breakfast Club Wednesdays, and this is a great, uh, just an incredibly, uh, this is just an incredible topic, and and you guys know this is right up my alley, uh, so I'm gonna try to uh, jump on this without taking too much uh, too much time. Let me just jump into. This. I'm not going to revisit the things that uh, too many of the things that were already stated. I think everybody did an amazing job. Uh, with their videos. Let's start with SourceAge for bringing this topic up and the way you handle it. Thank you. Thank you for that. Got that funk. Uh, really talked about all the media companies are being owned by less and less people. And uh, I want to piggyback off of Sister Danger who talked about uh, what we would uh, generally call the bread and circuses mentality, which is as long as people, uh, they get uh, food and safety and they're entertained, for the most part, they're good. But let's get into uh, what I'm going to talk about. And I'm pretty sure uh, everybody else knew I was going to talk about this. Uh, social media and YouTube and those things. Because you guys know that's my deal and that's what uh, where I kind of play. Most of the Breakfast Club uh, have their own channels where they're, they're decently popular, actually. They have some following. And uh, so, you know, they have a vested interest in social media. Now, when we talk about social media, a lot of people don't necessarily think that social media is media, but it is, hence the name, social media. When you tweet something, that tweet has the ability of going all over the world. Same thing is true definitely with the YouTube video. So we've been seeing in the past few uh, months uh, this need to protect the terrestrial media. And what I mean by that is this. Uh, I'm going to give you a lot of personal examples here, and uh, also I'm going to link to a video that Computing Forever did, which was a really good video about what's actually happening uh, if you're not really paying attention, hence, you know, going back to the bread and circuses uh, thing. So what you have here is when I tried to uh, advertise my film, Wages of Sin, this was way back in 2005. Uh, five, six, when the film first came out, I tried to do some cable advertising. And uh, there was a new company that was coming out, and they, were, they had some, uh, you know, kind of inexpensive. I still had to pay for it with a credit card. But uh, inexpensive ad rates because they didn't need you to advertise, you know, for 12 months. They just needed you to advertise, you know, spot advertising, as they called it. So uh, I bought some spot advertising, and I thought, Great, this is going to be great. People are going to learn about my movie. I'm going to advertise directly in Los Angeles so people will learn about my film in Los Angeles. Well, Los Angeles was having none of it. They're like, we don't care if you're advertising on cable. We don't care where you're advertising. You will not be advertising your movie here. And the reason that is is because they didn't know me. They have no idea who I was. I wasn't involved in their filmmaking process, I wasn't getting my films advertised in Los Angeles. It wasn't going to happen. Now, what we had to do to advertise, now, just to be clear, they didn't come out and say, no, dude, you ain't advertising in Los Angeles. They gave me some bullshit about, oh, you have things in your trailer that we, we, we can't advertise here. So I removed uh, various offending content, and they were still like, no. And this is how you know it's shady, because the second time they were like, we're not going to tell you why. We're not, we, we just don't, we're not going to do it, like it or not. And so what we had to do was go over to Burbank and some of the outlying areas and advertise there. And Burbank was, is where, and it's for those who don't know, uh, L.A. is where films are produced. That's where all the film people are. Burbank is where all the TV people are. 
I don't know if it's still that way, but at that time, that's, that's how it worked. Now, what you pretty much had are what's called gatekeepers. And that is, if you're not vetted, if you're not a star, if you're not famous, you don't get to be uh, Hollywood royalty. You don't get to walk around and just be this randomly famous person. You don't get to do that without being vetted or, you know, having big money or something like that. You, you have to be vetted. What YouTube allowed, and I'm going to be very YouTube specific because it's kind of right now one of the most important uh, platforms. And I want to separate YouTube from social media because while it has elements of social media, YouTube's tag is broadcast yourself. It is a broadcast platform with social media elements. Now, one of the things that people don't uh, understand is that when people start broadcasting themselves, it's was like, oh, you're just going to upload pictures of you at the zoo. That was the very first video uh, ever uploaded to YouTube, uh, me at the zoo. And then you're going to upload all these little things or you'll take stuff from terrestrial media and put it here. That was what people used to do. Like, uh, like now you'll see a lot of old commercials and stuff that people don't remember, things like that. Uh, and as long as you were doing that, that's fine. But when money got introduced into the mix and people started learning that you can have an actual platform, people started getting a little bit more savvy. So their living rooms started becoming studios. They started getting all the gear and stuff they needed. There, there were YouTube videos made. I myself make the same, some of these videos on telling people how to do all this stuff. And uh, people started actually putting their views out there. And those views started getting a lot of a lot of hits. Uh, some people started playing video games and got a lot of views. Some people and a lot of subscribers. Some people got famous from playing video games. Some people got famous from putting their views out. Some people got famous for being a YouTuber. Some people are writing books. Got famous for writing those or for being a YouTuber, but their books started selling. So. You got a problem now. And the problem is, whether you're on YouTube, some people on Facebook as well, some people on Twitter, the problem is now that the gatekeeper is no more. And guess who's trying to actually be friends with terrestrial media? YouTube. Because YouTube wants to be the new media. And they think by to do that, they have to get together with terrestrial media. And they kind of have to because... Terrestrial media will band together to get rid of YouTube. And they've been trying to do that for a while because, again, YouTube is a bunch of people who are sitting up in their living rooms talking and other people are saying, hey, I agree with you, which is not something that anybody wants. I'm going to end this with a freedom of speech argument. And it is that our freedom of speech is being encroached upon. Now, some of you who watch my other videos might say, well, how can you say it, Nathan? Uh, you say that YouTube and other places, these co corporations, don't have to adhere to freedom of speech. And that is 100% true. They don't. But all of these organizations are connected to the government in their own way. They support specific candidates. They uh, support specific ideologies. And therefore, they will silence your speech for the government. Now, I would go into the whole thing about restricted mode and stuff like that, but I think the uh, I think you should check out Computing for Everett's video. He does he goes into a whole thing about that. A lot of it is theory, but uh, he's got some actual good facts that back up what he's saying. As you might imagine, the alternative news media channels are being hit by restricted mode the hardest. Philip DeFranco has got to be among the least controversial and most fair and balanced political commentators I can think of with a very uh, kind of left of center perspective. But his channel is completely censored under restricted mode with zero videos showing up. Next is Sargon of Akkad. Again, about one or two of his videos are actually viewable on his channel. But under what grounds are his other videos being censored? It's not like Sargon swears in every video. Steven Crowder's channel has zero videos showing up on it in restricted mode. Alex Jones of Infowars, his channel, not one video shows up. Paul Joseph Watson's channel, not one video is viewable. They're all gone. Now you might say, well, Dave, kids should not be watching controversial political content. Sure, I can totally get behind that thinking, but 
not everyone is being treated fairly here. As we know, the mainstream media and big social networks are desperate to brand the alternative news media as fake news so as to maintain their hegemony over the news media narrative. Well, wouldn't you know it, CNN, CNBC, NBC, their channels on YouTube are not affected by the age restriction setting. They talk about the same political issues that the alternative media does, but from the correct perspective, right? And other than that, I would just like to say great job to all the Breakfast Club creators who have uh, uploaded videos about this. And uh, you guys have done uh, incredible, incredible jobs. So JJ Talks came back last week and she'll be up uh, tomorrow. You guys take it easy. And I... You say you want to try.